Welcome to Lifeboat. This is George G. And the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful Helen Croydon. Helen, are you ready to do this? I certainly am, George. All right, let's go. Helen is an entrepreneur. She's a thought leader in P- in public relations or PR. She's a three-time author, a former journalist. She's helping business leaders, authors, and academics move from anonymity to, uh, to authority. Helen, excited to have you on. Tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. Oh, wow. Three questions roll into one. <laughs> well, um, let's start with what, with, with what I do. Um, then we'll go into the personal stuff later. I always think, you know, let's ease into the personal stuff. Uh, so <laughs> I uh, I run a PR agency called Thought Leadership PR. Uh, but I say PR, but we are uh, PR with a difference. Uh, and we're, we're with a difference for two reasons. One is that we specialize in personal PR. So that's raising the profiles of um, CEOs or founders of businesses or consultants, academics, authors, uh, people with um, with some sort of subject matter expertise. And the reason that we do that is because I had to do that for myself when I was um, a journalist and author. So I kind of um, acquired the formula for how to do that. Um, and also because um, individuals have more stories to tell. So there is more genuine PR value in them, I believe. Um, And the second reason why we're a little bit different than conventional PR is that we only work with people who have a genuine positive message to share. So that might be that they're purpose led or it might be that they're in the sustainability sector or that they're trying their their business is trying to find a, a novel solution to a global problem. Or it might just be that they're a consultant and their way of um, consulting is to promote a kind of more positive or more mindful way of working. So um, it doesn't matter, you know, that, that purpose led doesn't necessarily have to be in the sustainability sector. But we work with people who are trying to affect genuine positive change um, and, um, you know, we call it purpose led. And again, the reason for that is that they have genuine thought leadership to share. So they are easier to PR. And I think what most people know PR for is to get a message out there and just to get mentions in the media for any brand um, and in my view, that's kind of false storytelling. That is, you're always going to struggle if you're just trying to get PR for the sake of a mention. So, um, but when you actually have a genuine positive message to share, um, it's easy to get uh, media coverage. It's easy to get attention. So they are the sorts of people that we work with um, because they're they're worthy. Their message is worthy of being heard. I love uh, it. And yes, so that's the first question. That's what I do. <laughs> I forgot there were two questions, two other questions. Um, <laughs> a little bit about um, about me personally. Okay, I'll go into that one. Um, so uh, I am a former journalist and, and author. I was a journalist for 15 years because I always wanted to be a writer. Uh, but then I realized about five years ago, sadly, that there is no money in journalism and there is no money in writing books. If you don't have anything to promote, there is a lot of value. There is a lot of status value, exposure value with getting in the media or getting books. Uh, if you have a business to promote at the end of it, but there isn't much um, value if you are, are a writer for the sake of being a writer. So after 15 years being a journalist and yeah, I had three books, one of which was long listed for a William Hill book of the year. Another was a uh, uh, what we call a WH Smith bestseller. WH Smith is a is a bookstore in the UK. So they were successful books. Still didn't make me any money. Um, sorry for all those aspiring writers out there. So um, I concluded that I needed to put my skills elsewhere. And at the same time, people were always asking me, "How can I get into the media? How can I um, get on?" radio oh I've got a book idea how can I research publishers etc so I realized that I had all this knowledge uh, which I suppose you would um, categorize as um, knowledge of of how to get a a message out how to develop a story angle from your personal expertise Um, so I figured that I have this expertise let's do something with it so I started doing um media work, how to get into the media workshops, little bits of media training. And eventually when I realized that there is a business model there, I set up my business thought leadership PR. Uh, And that's why I'm so passionate about working with individuals who have a message to get out, but don't know how to get it out there. 
I, 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 I love it. I don't love that you are a wonderful writer who was very successful, but not unable to, to, to make a sustainable living. I think that that's kind of a drag, but now it makes sense that you're helping people who are maybe in that position you were in to turn it into, you know, Hey, I've got this great message. I've I've got a great purpose I'm working towards. How do I actually get it in the hands of the people? I think it's the same with any creative industry, you know, writing, uh, being an artist, being um, an actor. Um, There's so many talented people out there, but unfortunately in the creative industries, talent doesn't translate into making a living. And I think, you know, the reason for that is obvious. There's so many people that that want to do it and it's very rewarding doing it. So uh, trying to monetize that is difficult. However, you know, if you have those skills, those creative skills, but you can use that to promote something else, like if you're a writer and you use those writing skills to promote a business or you're um, a very talented video editor, but you can use those video editing skills to promote a business, then then they're very valuable skills to have. I think, you know, the, the world that we are living in now, there is no place really for um, to monetize writing for the sake of writing or acting or singing for the sake of singing because there's just so much content out there that people aren't willing to pay for good creative work um, so it doesn't mean that there isn't a place for creativity but unfortunately I think creatives have to find other ways uh, of you know of, of, of monetizing and using their creative skills on, on the way to doing that. I certainly agree. And I think that creativity is one of the most important things that we as human beings do. And that, to your point, there's so much, I think that that maybe has the effect of stopping people from pursuing these kinds of endeavors, which from a financial standpoint is probably a good decision, but a real shame. So you can help people bridge the gap between I'm making something great and I can actually make money doing it. I think that that's that, that's that, that that's an awesome thing. How do I know if what I'm doing is worthy of engaging with a PR firm such as yours? Oh maybe, yeah, that's a great. Maybe question. that's the wrong question. I don't know. No, that's a great question and one that not many people ask. Actually, I think a lot of people go to a PR agency thinking that a PR agency can pick up the phone or send an email to their contacts, and then hey, you know, a story will magically appear uh, in the media. And that might have been the case in the nineteen seventies, <laughs> maybe when there were just a few PRs and a few uh, and a few journalists, and it really was about media relations in inverted commas. These days, it is really about a story so I think how to answer your question um you should be thinking about what is the message so stroke story stroke narrative that it is that you want to get out there and I would argue that everyone does have a story and and of course I say that you know I've written two memoirs not because I've had a fascinating life but just because I found two aspects you know, in my life that were worthy of drawing a story out and I made them relevant to the wider, you know, the wider public. Um, For example, one of my memoirs is about discovering endurance sport in later life. So I made that applicable to the wider theme of why aren't there more women in sport? Um, How we can realize that we can do so much more with our bodies than we think we can, those kind of themes. So I mentioned that because that is an example of, Um, drawing out a personal story that has some resonance with the media. So I think anyone who is thinking of PR, um, you will have a story, everyone have a story, but you have to be prepared to maybe re-angle what you want to talk about with actually what the media and what the public or what the business media, if if you want um, B2B media, if you want industry press, you have to pivot what you're what you can talk about and what you're willing to talk about to what the what the audience is actually interested in. Um, so yeah, I, I do wish that all the clients that came to me actually asked that question <laughs> before they came to me. Some really do have clear messages. They have a clear purpose they want to get out. They might have a book, they might have a bit of research, they might have a genuine um, new approach to doing business, or they may have, um, you know, a 
a methodology and, and that is absolutely black and white what it is they want to get out there and they are very easy to PR we do have some people that come to us who yeah they don't have a clear idea of what the message is but they just want some exposure and in that case that's where we have to do a little bit of work of extracting stories and they're the ones that have to be a little bit flexible with what it is that they can um talk about or be featured on makes a ton of sense right there um that i am an artistic person i am a creative type and i've made this thing that is so amazing and so wonderful but nobody's really that interested in it except for me. So it's probably a pretty common trap. Oh, uh, I don't know. Well, what is it? Let it test me. I, I, I bet there is some. What is it you would think that isn't of interest to other people? Oh, I'm not saying necessarily me. Every, everything that I do is super interesting to everybody. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying for other people, the, the the starving artist, that whole trope, right? It's 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 more common than it's not that I am. I have a passion for the thing that I'm interested in creating and I yes. create it, but I, it's, it's not something that is desired by, by other people. Yeah. How do you widen it? How do you make that relevant to what other people are searching for? And that is the art of storytelling or, um, or journalism, if you want to call it that. And that is the reason why um, in my business model, I um, only recruit journalists to do the media strategy so most PR agencies would have um a, a, they call account managers who are from a PR background and you know they they know the different titles they they have a good context book of journalists but they've never worked in a newsroom they haven't got that experience of developing a story knowing what um knowing what an editor is going to want so that is where we're a bit different. So I employ journalists because that is exactly what they are going to do. They have this almost instinctive ability to look at a big story or a topic and know what the top line is, what is of interest to the wider public, um, what is the link to trending themes right now, what's the link to the zeitgeist. And, and it is a skill. For sure. The ability to look at something and and from a different angle and sort of tease out or figure out what it is that is going to to be lightning in a bottle or or, or whatever the term might be is 100% a skill and just the perspective that you're talking about is very very valuable that, that PR has I'm sure it's changing constantly and the different ways that we're consuming information is changing constantly yes. so how, how what are the primary delivery mechanisms the the the, the primary mediums outlets that 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 y'all are using to help people get the message out yeah again that's that's a brilliant question um and my answer would be um it's pretty infinite and that is why um again you know that that is part of the skill of of pr that is the art of pr it's finding those platforms that match and you've hit the nail on the head that is exactly how it has changed it used to be that you know you'd have a very um, finite number of uh, printed publications, perhaps, um, you know, a few broadcast news channels, perhaps a few digital publications as well, but you'd have a very um, a wide but defined list of places to go to. These days, things are cropping up all the time and there is no distinction in the format. So, um, you know, a speaking event, it could be a conference or it could be a webinar, um, a podcast might be a podcast, but it might also be a YouTube can channel and a podcast. Uh, a publication might be a publication, but it might be a branded publication. So it could be a blog that belongs to a big brand. It's still kind of media because they still um, publish editorially um, independent articles, but it belongs to a brand. There are these, um, you know, little kind of niche blogs uh, industry blogs popping up that some people wouldn't call the media because they might be owned by kind of just a blogger in their bedroom however they may have thousands of followers and a very very direct following of people in a particular industry so they're still very powerful for certain people who want PR in that area and so it, it is just 
infinite and it is almost impossible to keep a database or to keep a contacts book of all these platforms and, and that is exactly how PR is changing you know and I get when I do sales calls with clients often the question I'm asked is or oh, what sort of publications do you have contacts in where are you going to get me into and that's just an impossible question to answer because the media is vast and when I say media I, I mean a wide definition of media I, I mean podcasts webinars branded journalism um other creator content you know influencers social media feeds that's all classed as um exposure right um so yeah so pr's changed hugely in that respect it's fascinating and there's new stuff popping up all the time literally so so how then do i evaluate a pr firm if I am in the if I'm in the market to say, you know what, this is interesting. What 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 questions do I need to be asking? How do I know that this person is going to actually deliver on? And I guess the greater question is, what is a successful engagement with a PR firm? And I suppose mm. that we can just keep kind of peeling peeling the uh, onion on, on on that. Mm. I would ask. Uh, I would want to get a sense if they've really understood what. Uh, it is that you want or can talk about, you know, your messaging, because essentially that I think is what it comes down to. It's not about the contacts anymore. It's about getting a story to match what the publications are looking for. So that would be, you know, if I was looking for a PR agency, that's what I'd want to know. Are you, you know, how in depth are you going to get on my talking points? Um the second thing is, you know, how do they pitch? Do they do blanket press release, um, big campaigns? If, if they say they're going to pitch to hundreds of outlets, I would walk the other way. Because, again, that might be like the old school way of doing it when, um, the, when there was only printed publications and they genuinely did read press releases because they were looking for stories. These days, journalists just they don't read press releases you know they don't they don't care they're on twitter looking at what is interesting they're um following all the millions of worldwide digital publications so the wider a pr agency pitches the more dubious i would be of their strategy i think bespoke pitching bespoke story development is the way to go um and to your question of what, you know, what benchmarks, what KPIs, again, it is it is so difficult. And this is part of what I think the existential problem of PR is that you just can't put KPI. You can never guarantee coverage. I, th I think we've never not got coverage for a client. Um, but you can't ever say I'm going to get one piece a month or two pieces a month. We, we say that as a guideline. We say our aim is to get one to two pieces a month if you're on this package two to three pieces a month if you're on that package but in reality that can never be a real kpi that's just an indication of how much time and effort you're going you're going to be putting in behind the scenes so i think you can ask for that um as a kpi from a pr agency um i'd be interested to know how are the pr agencies actually you know um respond to that and what kpis they do put in because i think it is a challenge of the industry that makes a lot of sense and i can certainly speak to my experience with people reaching out to me is i don't respond to anybody that isn't making a personal reach out it's just it doesn't even have my name on it or it says hi and then a comma so like well this is just a, you get just a blast email you know do and you I get, get a lot of pr agencies pitching guests like to you dozens dozens every day so that makes sense, Helen. It's, see how I was able to tie that back to me somehow? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Helen, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you and how can they engage with you? Um, they can look at our business website, which is thoughtleadershippr.com, um, or they can um, also follow us on Twitter, which is Thought Lead PR. That's our handle. Um, or just Google Thought Leadership PR and, and you'll find us. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed this much as I did, show Helen your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, go to thoughtleadershippr.com. 
and check out all the great things that Helen and her team are working on. Find them on Twitter, Thought Lead PR. I'll certainly link all the places in the notes of the show as well. Thanks again, Helen. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And until next time, remember, do your part by doing your best.